Hi guys, and uh, welcome back. Today I'll be doing the next part for What If Oak Trained Ash. Last time we left off, we saw Ash just moments before his gym battle against Lieutenant Surge. Let's see how this goes. Surge has sent out Minetric and Luxio. As the two mons sit dutifully by their trainer, waiting for Ash to call out their opponent. Ash spends a moment thinking before calling out his mons in Charmander and Nidorino. The fire lizard is taken by surprise being in the arena as Ash cheers out for his mons to get ready. Nidorino lets out a small battle cry as Charmander stands nervously, something Surge picks up on. As he sends his mons into the battle arena, Surge gives Ash the first move. Ash is happy to take it as he calls for a leer from Charmander. The Pokemon nervously agrees as it uses the move, dropping both of Surge's Pokemon's defense. As Ash then shouts out for Nidorino to use double kick on Manatrix. Surge calls for a quick attack from Manetric to counter the attack. Manetric speeds towards the poison type, slamming its body into it and sending it skidding backwards. Surge then calls for a spark from Luxio, with it rushing towards Charmander. Ash calls out for Charmander to use Fire Spin. The Pokemon doesn't respond in time and is hit hard by the spark, sending it flying across the arena. The small fire lizard pulls itself up, however, it doesn't feel the best. Ash shouts out for his friend and Charmander hands its head low, but Ash is happy to see it's still able to stand. Ash shouts out for Nidorino to use Poison Tail on Luxio, as Nidorino rushes towards the Pokemon, slamming its tail straight into the back of the Electric-type Pokemon. Surge shouts out for Manatric to use Electro Ball. The Pokemon opens its mouth and fires a ball of electricity towards Nidorino, hitting the Pokemon in the back as well, and getting him off Luxio, who stands up as Surge shouts for it to use Thunderfang on Charmander. Luxio nods, rushing towards Charmander. As Ash shouts for Charmander to use Ember, the Pokemon weakly lifts its head and fires off a small attack. The flame comes out of its mouth, hitting Luxio, but it continues to rush towards it and lands a solid bite down on Charmander, before throwing him away, once again putting Charmander on the floor, who can hardly move, but it pulls itself up, but the Pokemon not only is badly hurt, but feels defeated. Something Surge points out. He points out how weak Ash's Charmander is. It clearly isn't ready for battle, and this has left all the weight on Nidorino's shoulders. He tells Ash that he's brought a weak Pokemon into his gym, and this has been a really disappointing match so far. As Surge calls out for another Electro Ball from Electric, as the Pokemon charges up the attack and fires it off towards Charmander. Ash calls for Charmander to dodge it, but the Pokemon stands still, almost accepting its defeat. The words that Surge has said has stung into Charmander, reopening the still fresh wounds from what Damien had said. And just as this attack connects, it causes a big cloud of smoke. After it all clears away though, it reveals Nida Rhino stood in front of Charmander, having taken the attack for the starter. Charmander's confused as Ash thanks Nidorino for moving fast enough. The Poison Pin Pokemon lets out a small growl, but is clearly hurt. Charmander looks sad, but Ash shouts out to his newest team member, saying that he shouldn't worry about anything from the past or anything anyone said. Charmander's an amazingly strong Pokemon. Ash understands this, and he wishes Charmander saw it in himself. He just needs to believe, and then he'll prove the world wrong. Charmander is happy to hear that Ash believes in him this much, as he looks towards Nidorino, who gives the Pokemon a small nod, which gets Charmander teared up a little bit, but it shakes its head and gets ready to fight. It wants to prove its new trainer that it is worthy of this spot on its team, and he wants to believe that Ash knows what he's talking about. As both of Ash's Pokemon get ready, Surge smiles on the other side of the arena. He asks if Ash is ready to lose, but Ash shouts out a command asking Nidorino to use Double Kick on Luxio, then shouts out for a Fire Spin from Charmander. Nidorino rushes towards his opponent while Charmander prepares his Fire Spin. Nidorino unfortunately misses his target, confusing Surge and annoying Ash. He understands it's part of Nidorino's ability, but that was a really bit of unfortunate timing. But, something that takes Ash by surprise is the moment the Fire Spin is shot out of Charmander, it's stronger than any attack he's seen the Little Lizard produce. Ash realises that Charmander's ability must be Blaze, and being near defeat has given him a huge boost in power. As the attack lands on Luxio, pushing it across the arena and slamming it into the wall, knocking it out with one solid hit. Charmander can't believe it just did that, 
as it lets out a little battle cry and Ash cheers out for his Pokemon. Charmander excitedly looks back towards Ash, who's smiling brightly at him, but Surge soon draws the attention of the trainer back to the battle. Surge calls for an Iron Tail from his Minetric. The Pokemon starts running towards Nidorino. Ash calls for a Poison Tail to counter it, and the two attacks clash. However, Minetric has hardly been hurt while Nidorino is heavily injured leading to Minetric winning the clash, sending the Nidorino straight into the ground, having taken a heavy blow. The Pokemon is hardly able to stand, as it starts to see an Electro Ball forming in the air, aimed towards it. Ash calls for his partner to dodge, but Nidorino can't move. Luckily for Ash though, Charmander fires off an incredibly strong looking fire type attack, which Ash instantly recognises as a flamethrower. The two attacks collide after Electro Ball leaves Minetric's mouth and causing an explosion. Ash thanks Charmander as the Pokemon looks confident as it stands out in front of Nidorino. Surge likes the new fighting spirit that seems to be burning through Charmander right now. As he calls for a quick attack the moment Minetric lands on the ground, Ash calls for another flamethrower which Minetric easily dodges before slamming its body into Charmander's causing Charmander to go backwards a few inches, but at the command of a fire spin, Charmander doesn't hesitate, firing off a powerful looking attack. With this combining, it begins to engulf Minetric, keeping him trapped inside the fire spin. Unable to escape, as Surge tries to come all the way to get out, Ash wastes not a second as he shouts out for another flamethrower, and with Minetric not able to move, he's hit directly by the attack and pushed into the fire spin doing a good chunk of damage as the fire spin cancels out thanks to the extra added flame from Flamethrower. This deals huge damage to Manectric, as Surge can tell Charmander will go down with one more hit. So he calls for another Iron Tail. Ash seeing this, he calls for a Scratch to challenge Manectric. With Charmander getting ready to attack, he challenges the Iron Tail for a brief second before being knocked away. Ash then calls out for a Poison Tail as Surge realises he had completely forgotten about Nidorino who had managed to gain some strength back and jumps up, hitting Minectric in the gut, knocking it out, leading to Ash getting declared the winner. As Surge is impressed, he recalls both his Pokemon and tells them they did a good job and to get some rest. Ash is so proud of Charmander and Nidorino as he hugs them both. Charmander happily hugs back. The Pokemon begins to glow for a few seconds before it stops. Ash is confused. He knew that was Charmander trying to evolve, but... Why did it stop? Surge gives his opinion, saying that maybe Charmander wants to prove its strength as a Charmander before it allows itself to evolve into Charmeleon. Truthfully, Surge believes it deserves the evolution, but maybe there's a goal that only Ash and itself would know about that it wants to achieve before it lets itself evolve. Ash thinks for a minute before remembering that maybe it wants to prove how strong it is to Damien before allowing it to evolve. Ash asks if Char this is the truth. And Charmander nods its head. He knows that its old trainer was wrong, but he still wants to prove its strength as a Charmander before it evolves. Ash praises his Pokemon for such a great goal and promises that they will prove Damien wrong the moment they see him. Charmander lets out a small cheer before being recalled to its Pokeball, getting some much needed rest. As Ash also recalls Nidorino, who he thanks for looking after Charmander so much. Pokemon nods as they also get some rest. This leads to Surge handing over the Thunder Badge. Ash happily celebrates, and Surge praises him for a good battle. At first, he was worried he would be nothing like the other trainers from, from Pallet Town, so he was happy to see that he's exactly the same. In fact, he might have more fighting spirit than the rest. But Surge can tell that Ash is definitely weaker than Gary, but he doesn't vocalise this. As Ash finishes celebrating, he's about to escort the child out, telling him to get on with his adventure and to pay a visit when he's stronger then they can have a true six on six battle and as the group is ready to leave misty who had watched from the sides with brock steps in asking if she could challenge the gym ash and brock look confused as misty explains that after watching the battle that ash had just put on she got really fired up so she wants to give it a shot plus it could be a good way to practice for covering her weaknesses Surge does know of Misty, the youngest gym leader in the region, and agrees to challenge the girl, but tells her right now 
most of his party is still recovering from battles he's had over the most recent days and also from that battle he just had so if it's okay with her it will only be a one on one since his party does need to heal Misty accepts the conditions as they begin their battle both calling upon their aces Misty calling out Starmy and Surge calling out Raichu the battle begins and is intense, as Misty uses her Pokemon's psychic abilities to keep many electric attacks from hitting, while also landing some weak blows with some of her attacks. However, as the battle rages on, it's clear that Surge has some experience fighting psychic types, and he's coming up with a counter plan as they battle. As the match rages on, slowly Misty loses ground, and eventually a strong thunder knocks out her Starmie, leading to her losing. She is upset and really discouraged, but she doesn't realise how close of a battle it was, as Surge's Raichu looks like it could probably only take one more serious hit before going down, as she kind of beats herself up mentally, thinking that the battle was a stupid idea. Surge walks over and gives her some words of encouragement. He explains that she is an incredible gym leader and a great battler, but she just wasn't fortunate to be a water type gym leader. She tried to counter it using psychic types, and he commends her for that, but he's really used to fighting them. He's really close friends with another gym leader who specialises in the type, so he knows how to fight around that, not weakness, but that power house of a type. He does recommend her to head off and train before coming back, maybe learn to overcome one of her weaknesses before retrying the gym, as he will happily battle her again and maybe have a more intense battle. Misty thanks him, as Surge thinks for a moment before actually recommending where they should head next. He tells them to head to Celadon City, where they can fight Erica, the grass type specialist. It'll be another badge for Ash, and some good experience for Misty. Hearing this, the pair thank Surge, and sort of reignites Misty's passion. She understands that it's going to be a hard battle, but if she can learn to overcome some of her weaknesses, it will make her a better gym leader at the end of the day, and that's what she wants. So, the group leave, thanking Surge for all of his help. The lieutenant just gives a salute, and goes off to heal his Pokemon in the gym. While waiting for their teams to be healed, the group talk about where they want to go next. Ash and Misty both want to head off towards Celadon City for their next gym battle, and Misty shares her wish to try out the gym challenge. It's to improve her skills as a gym leader, but also to prove to herself that she is a capable fighter and will make a great gym challenge. Ash is happy to hear this and encourages her to do so. He explains that she's already a really competent trainer, so just getting that little bit more battle practice in will be great for her. Alongside this, this means he'll have a tr rival travelling alongside with him, which will help keep him motivated. Plus, Brock doesn't mind wherever they go. He set off on his journey to become a more skilled trainer and also pick up some more doctor skills as he travels, so he's happy to head wherever anyone wants to go, but as long as he gets to help out with Nurse Joys and help any injured Pokemon along the way. As the group start to plan their journey, Ash brings up how he wants to actually stop in Lavender Town and speak to Agatha more about regional variants, leading to Misty being filled in about the events of Mount Moon learning of Team Rocket and how they ran into Aquifer and also regional variants. She's interested in them herself and wonders what sort of regional variants are out there. This means it kind of has her interest, so she doesn't see any harm in stopping in Lavender Town. So the group decide on their journey. They'll head through Route 11 up Route 12 to make it to Lavender Town. They'll then cut through Saffron City and head to Celadon. Misty brings up the fact that there's actually a gym in Saffron City she believes it's the psychic gym which Surge was talking about, so it could be a good place to check out too. As the group decide their trip, they head off for a night's rest, before heading out on their journey. Along the way, Ash and Misty start training together. Misty uses Ash and his Bulbasaur to try and overcome that grass type weakness, which he's inevitably going to have to face in the next upcoming gym. And Ash uses Misty to help Charmander grow over his water weakness and grows a more competent trainer. He also uses Brock to train up Nida Rhino and Spearow, Brock's Onyx to help Spearow overcome his rock type weakness, and help him learn some moves to take them down. And as for Nida Rhino, he uses Golem as sort of a punching bag to learn to control Thrash, and even is taught a move by Golem. Now, along this journey, the group come across an old friend of Ash's, in a female trainer called Green, 
one of the trainers sponsored by Oak. As Brock recognises the girl as a trainer, he fought as a gym leader not too long before he met Ash. Ash is happy to see her once again. As they spend some time catching up, Ash learns of how the girl's journey has been and learns that she's managed to snag herself three badges. As she shows off the badges, Ash realises that she's missing the Thunder badge. Asking about it, Green explains that she actually lost the first battle she had against him and it almost made her give up her journey, but she remembered what Oak taught them about not giving up. So she went off to recenter herself, actually beating another gym while she was out, but she caught a new Pokemon and hoping it will perform well against Surge. Ash, hearing this, shares how he's only got two badges and shares the story behind it, getting a laugh out of Green, who apologises saying she was the last of the uh, Pallet Town trainers to make it to Cerulean City, so she actually probably took that last battle. The pair laugh as they catch up a little more. However, after a few minutes of talking, Ash asks if she would be up for a Pokemon battle. Green apologises, explaining how most of her Pokemon are pretty injured after a rough day of training. But, like she had mentioned earlier, she has recently acquired a new Pokemon, and getting some practice in wouldn't be a terrible idea. So she agrees to have one quick match. The rules being the battle will only go on for a few minutes, if no knockout happens it will be a draw, and it will be a one on one. Ash agrees, as Green calls out her ghastly. Ash is excited to see the only native Kanto ghost type, as he calls upon his Bulbasaur in its first true battle. As Ash calls for his first move in Razor Leaf, Green commands ghastly to dodge it and then go in for a lick. The Pokemon does so and successfully pulls off a lick, grossing both Ash and Bulbasaur out. Our main character then tells Bulbasaur to use Leech Seed while Ghastly is close. Bulbasaur responds, firing off a few bursts of seeds which latch onto Ghastly and begin to drain him of energy. Ghastly then responds with a Confuse Ray which successfully lands, confusing Bulbasaur. As the battle begins to rage on as a battle which is very hard to keep up with, not in the sense that it is fast paced, it's just confusing. Bulbasaur has a hard time landing a hit on Ghastly, but when he does, it hurts. And with the Leech Seed chip, he's slowly draining Ghastly down. Whereas Ghastly is only able to do small bits of damage with Lick, and occasionally a bit of damage with Confuse Ray. Slowly, after a long back and forth match, Brock decides to call it, declaring it a draw. Both trainers are a bit bummed out they didn't get to finish the match, but are happy to at least call it a draw. As they sit down deciding to eat lunch together. As Green and Ash catch up some more, Green gets to speak to Brock and Misty. She had already met Brock when she had challenged the Pewter City gym and is catching up with him a little bit. As She also gets to know Misty, learning that she's one of the Cerulean City sisters and is interested to see what the redhead could do. As Misty and Green actually get on pretty well. During all these conversations, Ash and Green learn about each of us starters, as Ash learns that Green actually got a Bulbasaur, as she learns about his Nidorino. The two talk a bit more, and eventually Green brings up something that none of the group was expecting. She asks if Ash will be taking part in the Karate Dojo tournament, confusing the group. The girl is not sure how they don't know, but she explains that Saffron City has a Karate Dojo, and it used to be the gym of the city. But once Sabrina moved in, they got pushed to the side. So in an effort to reignite the passion and the attention back to them, they decided to host a tournament to draw in some new students at the same time. But it has gained a lot more attention than they were ever planning. So they've actually had to rent out a whole new arena just to hold this tournament. It will be a good place to meet other trainers and a lot of people are scouting out the new and up and comers. Ash hearing this is interested and asks when it is. Green explains that it's a bit over a month away as she thinks that Gary and Red have entered from what Oak has explained so she's going to take place as well. Explaining how she wants to win one of the grand prizes. Hearing this Misty's ears perk up asking what she means by grand prizes. Green explains that they have announced that there will be multiple prizes for the tournament. After drawing in a big crowd, they upped the stakes a little bit by adding this prize. They haven't leaked or confirmed anything yet, but they have said that 
it won't only be the winner of the tournament who is walking away with a prize. Apparently people will win prizes for other things, but they haven't revealed it in a way to avoid people cheating, she guesses. And she has heard that the prizes are supposed to be super amazing. The group hearing this are sold on the idea, which makes Green happy as she realises that Pallet Town squad will all be back together and in a way that they can challenge one another. As she realises the time, she apologises but says she wants to make it back to Vermilion City soon and she's already a few days away by now, so the faster she gets back the better. So she leaves, wishing Ash good luck. Ash does the same as the group head off, now having a new goal in mind. Not only do they want to check out the gym, they also have a tournament in place. As the group continue their journey with a new broad intensity to their training, in hopes to win. On their way to Lavender Town, the group find themselves eating on the shore of a beach, along Route 12. In the midst of the meal, Bulbasaur can't shake the feeling like he's being watched. He looks around, not being able to see anything other than his trainer and its friends. So he shakes off the feeling, which is when it looks into the water to see a small set of eyes poking out from the ocean. Bulbasaur stares at it for a second and then realises where the eyes are looking, straight towards Bulbasaur's own food. Bulbasaur gives a small gesture with its vine, if that's what it's looking at, as the Pokemon plops underwater before appearing again. Bulbasaur, being a kind-hearted Pokemon, picks up a big portion of its own food and approaches the water, dropping his share of the food into the ocean. There's a second or two where the food just floats, before a small little tendril comes up and grabs a large portion of the food, and a few seconds go by of nothing, before a Pokemon emerges from the ocean, which Bulbasaur has never seen. The two Pokemon stare at each other for a moment or two, as Bulbasaur can't really figure out what's going on. Ash realises that his Bulbasaur is missing, as he scans the area, seeing his plant friend down by the beach. He wonders what he's doing as he approaches, and as he gets closer, he realises that Bulbasaur is interacting with a water type Ash had never thought he would see. As he moves much faster towards Bulbasaur, he actually scares the water type back into the ocean, but not too far, as Bulbasaur lets out a small call, as if to tell the wild Pokemon it's only a trainer and he's really nice. The Pokemon sits in the water for a moment before crawling back onto land. Ash freaks out internally, but Bulbasaur keep prevents him from freaking out too much, holding its vine to Ash's lips, knowing that this Pokemon seems to be really shy. Ash is amazed at the sight of an Omanyte. He remembers reading that this Pokemon was extinct a couple years back, but has been brought back to life over the years and has begun to thrive massively in the wild, and has in fact become an invasive species in some areas of the world. He just didn't know one of them was Kanto. At least, he doesn't remember reading anything about it living in Kanto. So, he's so happy he gets to see one this close. As Omanyte looks curiously at Ash, the trainer asks if the Pokemon would like some food. The Pokemon shakes slightly as Ash walks back over to his bag and pulls out some water type special food he made. It was supposed to be a surprise for one of Misty's Pokemon, but for now it will just be Omanyte's. As he walks back over and places the food on the beach. As Ash walks away, he has actually grabbed the attention of Brock and Misty, with the redhead being interested in the Pokemon which has just come out of the water, and heck, even Brock's interested, knowing this to be a fossil, but he stays quiet as he watches Ash work with the Pokemon, amazed at how calm he can be. As Ash gives the ancient Pokemon some poker food, he sits and watches it for a few seconds, as the Pokemon eats up the food fast. Ash, getting a bit more comfortable, goes to touch the Pokemon, but Omanyte retreats into its shell, getting nervous. Ash lets out a small chuckle, apologising, telling Omanyte to stay safe, and Ash asks if Bulbasaur would like his food bowl refilling. Bulbasaur nods in agreement, giving Omanyte's shell a little tap with one of his vines, before wandering off back towards their food. Both Brock and Misty are confused at why Ash didn't catch the Pokemon, as Ash shrugs, saying the Pokemon doesn't seem too comfortable around people, so he didn't want to remove it from the wild and freak it out more than he already has to. As he puts more food in Bulbasaur's bowl, 
he sits down to finish eating his own food, which is when he feels something kind of heavy fall on his foot. He jumps up in pain as he looks down to see an ammonite shell. For a second he's confused as he picks it up, before he realises that two beady eyes are poking out of it and looking directly at Ash. Ash realises as he looks over to the beach that Omanite must have followed him. Bulbasaur seeing this comes over too, letting out a little shout to let Omanite know he's here, which gets the Pokemon to poke its whole body out a little bit to see Bulbasaur. As Omanite comes out of its shell fully, Ash asks if the Pokemon's okay, if it's injured or anything, and why it's followed him. There's a second where Omanite pulls back into its shell and one tentacle remains out, as the Pokemon points towards itself, then Bulbasaur, then Ash. Ash is confused for a moment, but realises that maybe Omanite wants to come with him, as he asks if that's what he wants. Omanite nods the tentacle in agreement, as Ash smiles, saying he would love to have a Pokemon like him. As he reaches for a Pokeball, Omanite taps the seal on the ball, capturing itself. Ash shouts out happy, as Missy is upset she missed out on a water type. Even Brock is a bit jealous, since it's been a while since he had added a new addition to the team, so he'll keep an eye out for the next one, which grabs his interest. But the team is happy that they at least have a new friend, and Ash brings out his new teammate, who continues to hide in his shell throughout all the introduction to all of Ash's Pokemon. He does pop his head out to say hi to Bulbasaur, who sits by and comforts the Pokemon while he hides in his shell. After this meeting, the group continue their journey, heading on to Lavender Town. During this bit of travel, Misty offers to help Ash train Omanyte, since it's a water type and she's quite good at training them, which is when Ash learns of how Omanyte fights. It's a bit different to what he's used to, but he'll make it work. After a while of travel, the group arrive in Lavender Town, which gives Misty this creepy feeling, but for the most part, she lets it go. Ash feels unfazed, however, and is more curious to learn about regional variants than ever. The group had already decided that they would stop into a Pokemon Centre first, before heading off to find Agatha, so that's what they do. While Ash goes off to call Professor Oak, with Misty accompanying him, Brock goes and shoots his shot with Nurse Joy, seeing if she needs any help around the Centre. Also simping hard for her. As Ash calls up Oak, he catches up his sponsor on most recent events going on. As Oak learns about all the new additions to his team, he's surprised to hear that he's got most of the starters, and also excited to hear that Ash caught an Omanyte, having never gotten a chance to get close to one of the fossils. He asks Ash if he'll send him to the lab at some point, and Ash ha will happily agree, but for now he wants to bond with the Pokemon more. As the conversation goes on, eventually Ash asks Oak if he could tell him where they could find Agatha, as he wants to learn more about regional variants. Getting a bit of a funny laugh out of Oak, as he tells Ash that unfortunately Agatha is visiting him at the lab. They wanted to catch up for old time's sake, and Agatha was closer to him than he was to her. Ash hearing this is shattered. He really wanted to learn more about regional variants, and Oak can tell, as he laughs slightly, explaining he called her over, just to learn about regional variants himself. He can't believe how much he's rubbed off on the kid. Even Misty is visibly upset that she won't get to learn more about this weird thing she's never heard about, and Oak apologises to the pair of them, but this helps him remember something, as he asks Ash to plug in his Pokédex into the computer. Ash is confused, but after a few seconds of talking about it, he eventually does it, trusting his sponsor. And as Ash plugs it in, it begins to update. Ash isn't sure what's going on, as Oak explains that. After everything which has happened recently, with Ash running into regional variants and Pokemon from Alola, he wants to give him a chance to be able to understand more about these Pokemon. So, he's updating his Pokedex alongside the other Pallet Town trainers, explaining that Ash is actually the first one to get the update. Ash is happy to hear this, as he thanks Oak for the upgrade. Oak tells his student not to worry about it at all, and in fact tells Ash to keep an eye out and call him it within the next few days. He has a surprise brewing, but he's still waiting on everything to arrive. Ash is interested and begs for Oak to tell him, but the professor stands strong, saying how he needs to get back to talking to Agatha, but wishes the trainer good luck on the rest of his journey. Ash thanks Oak. As he hangs up, Ash and Misty, bummed that they can't learn more about regional variants, decide to go find Brock and just head off straight towards Saffron, which is when a young boy comes running in, holding a Cubone, 
shouting out, asking for help, and saying they've taken its mother. But that's where I'm going to leave this part for now. Sorry, I'm leaving it here, but, you know, it's 29 minutes. I think that's pretty good. Um, I really enjoyed writing this part, I'm not going to lie. I had a bit of writer's block for it, but once I started to get things together, I kind of started to like it. Um, I probably need to explain why I've given Ash an Omanyte. And for those of you who don't know, um, in the most... Not the most recent. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, one of his po Omanyte's Pokedex entries actually explains how Omanyte has gone on to thrive and survive recently in the new waters of the world. After being revived for so many years and released, he's actually become an invasive species. And even though that probably takes place a few years from now, than it does in the original canon. I thought it could be fun to give Ash this Pokemon. Plus, we have seen in the anime that they are still alive, so it's not a complete impossibility. And with Ash taking a completely different route from Vermilion City, instead of what he did in canon, I thought this would be a fun way to give him a new Pokemon. I know I haven't given Brock or Misty too much difference, with Misty only really having a Clyde Squirtle. And in future parts, I will have bits where I show off their teams but for now um, they are sticking with what they had in canon but I do plan on giving them some new Pokemon. As f for everything else I do hope people enjoy. I hope the idea of this tournament is exciting to some people as I'm looking forward to running it and already have an idea of the prizes and all of this and that and that but with that all being said I do hope everyone enjoyed. Have a great day or a good night and I'll see you next time.